Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to this short lecture on CPR for paediatrics, which is a follow-on from the adult CPR lecture. Thankfully, it's a lot rarer for children to go into cardiac arrest than it is for adults. The guidelines for healthcare professionals who have a duty to respond in a paediatric emergency are slightly different to the adult guidelines with a bigger emphasis on ventilations. This reflects the fact that the more likely cause of a paediatric cardiac arrest will be asphyxia as opposed to a primary cardiac event in an adult. For the purpose of the guidelines, an infant is referred to as an under one year old, the child is from 1 to 18 and an adult is over 18. Since we don't always have this information immediately to hand, if it looks like a baby, assume it's a baby. If it looks like a child, then it's a child. And if it looks like an adult, then it's an adult. The initial approach is the same as for an adult. Check for danger, check for responsiveness, usually by pinching or flicking, never shake an infant, and shouting for help. The way we open the airway will vary a bit depending on the size of the child. In an infant, the airway should be opened with a head in the neutral position and a chin lift. As the child increases in age, a small degree of head tilt chin lift will be required, progressing further up to a full head tilt chin lift in adulthood. With the airway open, look, listen and feel for normal breathing for no longer than 10 seconds. Infrequent noisy gasps can occur in cardiac arrest and are not a sign of normal breathing. Assuming someone has responded to your shout for help, get them to call the paediatric cardiac arrest team on 2222, stating clearly that it is a paediatric cardiac arrest and the ward location twice. Start by clearing the airway if necessary and attempting five rescue breaths. With an infant, use your mouth over their mouth and nose, and in a child, Pinch their nose and use mouth to mouth. Remember that your lungs are a lot bigger than theirs, so give just enough volume to make their chest rise over a duration of one to one and a half seconds. If the chest hasn't risen after five attempts, then move on. The airway may be blocked. After these five attempts, check for a pulse and other signs of life for no longer than 10 seconds. In an infant, use the brachial or femoral pulse, and in a child, use the carotid or femoral pulse. Assuming there's no pulse and no signs of life, or a pulse of less than 60 in a moribund, apneic infant or child, then we can presume cardiac arrest. We perform 15 compressions to a rate of 100 to 120 a minute. When compressing an infant or a child's chest, we aim to compress at least one third of the depth of the chest. In an infant, we do it by using two fingers or two thumbs. In a child, use one or two hands to compress the chest, depending on the size of you and the size of the child. Once the 15 compressions have been performed, then attempt another two breaths, and then continue CPR at a ratio of 15 to 2. If you're ever on your own, perform one minute of CPR before going for help. Remember that in these circumstances, doing something is always better than doing nothing. I hope you never have to use these guidelines for real.